So you're interested in raising pigs on pasture, but you don't quite know where to start. It's easy to get inspired, but now that it's time to get started, you need some more in-depth guidance, and Heifer USA is here to help. This video is exactly the tool you need to learn the very first steps to raising pigs on pasture. We'll teach you where to keep your new piglets, how to prepare for their arrival, and what to do when they finally arrive on your farm. Stay tuned until the end of this video to learn how you can get a free new resource to help you succeed in raising pastured pork. Hi, I'm Christine Hernandez, Livestock Specialist for Heifer USA. And today we'll be talking about receiving piglets to your farm. So we are here in our piglet receiving barn, our piglet receiving area, and we are going to be talking about three different topics today. The first one will be getting your barn ready to receive those piglets. The second one will be actually receiving those piglets to your farm. And then the third one will be training your piglets and getting them ready to move out to pasture. So a well-prepared receiving area is very important for your new pigs coming in. So they're going to have a little bit of a stressful time transitioning from where they're coming from, that transportation ride, and then arriving at your new farm. So just having everything set up and prepared will really help those new pigs settle in and become less stressed when they get to your farm. Before you receive piglets to your farm, you wanna make sure that you have an appropriate area already set aside to receive and train those piglets. So here at Heifer USA, we are using an already existing barn that we just added some infrastructure to to make it available to train piglets. We follow the livestock standards made by the Grassroots Farmers Cooperative. And so we need to have six square feet per pig available in our receiving area. Four square feet of that needs to be covered by a roof to help keep those pigs out of inclement weather, out of the sun. So if you are doing a batch of 100 pigs, you need to have 600 square feet available to them. And 400 of that needs to be covered. The existing barn that we are currently using here has two sides um, and then a really nice roof. The outside pasture area is actually an old corral system. So there's pipe fencing out there. So we use that as our perimeter fence. And then we just put up some hog panels as our inside perimeter fence. So I really like this setup because it's nice and it's open to the air. We get some good ventilation going through here. We're also protected by the roof from the sun and inclement weather. The outdoor section of our piglet receiving area has a lot of thick, tall forage, and the pigs will absolutely love going out there. They will eat some of that forage and they'll also trample some of that down. And then after the pigs leave, it will have time to regrow before our next batch gets here. Since we receive piglets four times a year, we're gonna receive them during the different seasons. And so we wanted to implement something into our barn that really helps those piglets that we receive in the winter and the colder seasons, gives them a little bit of extra protection from the weather. So we just built this hoop structure that you can see behind me. It's made out of cattle panels and pine trees that we cut down here at the ranch. So the white tarp on top is actually old schooner tarp from our poultry enterprise. And everything in there we have repurposed. Here I just use hog panels or cattle panels as my really secure perimeter fence and it's just stapled into the wood posts and then clipped onto T posts. Uh, majority of the pigs that you're going to be receiving onto your farm will not have experienced electric wire before. And so it's very important that you have a good secure perimeter fence around your receiving area. In addition to the barn structure that we have here providing the cover for the pigs, we also have an outdoor area. Outside, we have the corral piping as a perimeter fence. We also have hog panels that help create a really solid barrier and a gate where we can come in and out with the tractor, and then that's how we'll be getting the pigs out. There are a number of different bedding materials that you can use. Those would include hay, 
straw, wood chips, and sawdust. Here at Heifer USA, we use mulch hay. So we bring up big round bales. So I will drop the hay bale within the receiving area. I will put down four to six inches of hay within the hoop structure so that the piglets can bed down in there. I put big armfuls within the hoop structure to make that four to six inch bedded area. And then I just leave the rest of the hay out here so that the pigs can interact with it. They will also eat the hay. They'll snuggle in the hay around the bale outside here. We go through about one bale of hay in our warmer months, but in the cooler months and in the winter, sometimes we'll go through two or three bales because we'll put down fresh bedding every day to cover up old bedded areas. And like I said, the pigs will also consume some of it. An additional area that I have set up within our receiving area will be our hospital pen. So I have one of our old farrowing huts up here and then I just use hog panels and made a, a smaller area that's contained with its own water supply and its own feed supply. And so that's important to have set up before your piglets get here because once the piglets are here and are starting to settle in, you wanna make sure that you spot any pig that maybe doesn't feel well or is limping or has any other health issue. The reason why I have our hospital pen set up within a receiving area is so that those piglets can still interact across the hog panels from one another. It's important that the pigs can still socialize and see each other. And then if you have other pigs within your batch that need to go in that hospital pen, you, you can just grab them up and put them in there. You don't need to contain them or take them off somewhere else. In this video, we will show you the number of different feeders that we use for our piglets when they're up here in the receiving barn. So we have a Supreme Gravity feeder with flap doors on it. We have a metal bulk feeder that's a trough style. We also have a wood trough feeder. The feeder that the piglets will eat the most from would be our metal bulk trough feeder. Uh, it's nice and low to the ground, so all the piglets, no matter what size they are, can reach it and eat out of it. Um, it does hold about a thousand pounds of feed, so that there's always feed available. So we want our piglets to know that we're the ones that bring them the feed. And so having the wood trough feeder where the pigs can see us bringing feed to them. We will also be using this wood trough feeder to help entice the pigs to go outside into their new pasture area after about a week of being in the barn. The wood trough feeder does create some feed wastage, which we are aware of, but we are okay with that because we are building that relationship with our pigs. And then we have the Supreme bulk feeder with the flap doors. And so that can hold just over a ton of feed. Uh, it takes the piglets a few days to really figure out how to use that feeder because they have to lift that flap door up with their nose. I will sit out there with the pigs, you know, and, and hold the door up for them, but until they really understand how to use it, that'll be the one that they use less often. You want to make sure that you have your feeders filled and within your receiving area the day before your piglets get here. That way everything is all set and ready to go. You wanna make sure that the feed is always clean and dry. And so the feeders that are open, so our wood trough feeder and our metal trough feeder, I make sure to put those underneath the roof structure so that they're not exposed to the rain. The Supreme bulk feeder I can put outside because it has those flap doors to protect it from any weather. You wanna make sure that your pigs have full access to feed all the time. So you don't wanna create any stress with them running out of feed. The more pigs you have, the more feed space you're going to be needing. To make sure that the pigs always have access to feed, I fill up a portable tote bag with about a ton of feed and bring it up here and place it within our receiving barn. That way I can just take a five gallon bucket or two and fill up our wood trough or our metal trough when needed. We use Swine One Ration through Relco, and so you just need to make sure you have the appropriate protein level for the age of pigs you have. Pigs in water can always be a difficult situation. They love to be in the water. They like to get wet whenever possible, especially if they're hot. Being able to provide pigs with clean, fresh water can sometimes be difficult. 
And because of that, we decided to go with a Ritchie hog waterer. And we have a four door Ritchie waterer that is piped in into our receiving area. So it's always here, it's always filling with fresh water. It's easy to clean. So there's a plug that you can pull out of the bottom side of it that will drain the water out of the holding tank and out of the four watering sections. And then we just take a scrub brush and some soap and we can easily clean it out and get it ready for the next batch. That water tends to get dirty pretty quickly just from the feed and the dirt that's on their nose. It's also simple for us to clean out while the piglets are still in the receiving barn to help ensure that they are getting clean, fresh water. An additional step that you can take to help get your piglets settled into your receiving area would be to add vitamins and electrolytes to their water. It helps give those piglets a boost and rehydrate them after their long journey. Another thing that I prepare for our piglets that I have up here in our receiving area for whenever we need it would be my pig health kit. And so there's a number of really important things to have available before your piglets get here. I use spray line and this is just a spray paint that is safe on animals. And so I have this in case there is a pig that is showing symptoms of something or that I might be concerned about, I'll just mark it so that I can keep an eye on it. Or if anyone else is doing chores for me and they have a concern, they can also mark that pig. Um, a digital thermometer is important to have. If you have a pig that isn't feeling well, you'll be able to take its temperature and see if it has a fever and then go from there with how you need to be treating that pig. Since we raise our pigs for the Grassroots Farmers Cooperative, we do follow their standards as a antibiotic Free farm. So antibiotics would be our, our last defense. Uh, the first would be using animal aspirin. So this is something that you can just put in their water and just helps that pig feel better so it wants to get up and, and eat and drink as it's working on its immune system. Wound coat we use on a number of our different animals if they have abrasions or any type of wound. This is like a liquid band-aid that we can put on top of that. Also in my pig health kit would be some sugar. If a pig has a rectal prolapse, if we catch it early enough, we can clean it and put sugar on it and hopefully be able to push that prolapse back in and keep it retained. Finally, we have a scrub brush. So we wanna make sure that we follow biosecurity. So we have a scrub brush to help clean our boots uh, before we go visit any other pigs on the farm. Even though we strive to be an antibiotic-free farm, if other treatments aren't working, then we will administer antibiotics as needed. If a pig does receive antibiotics, then I will use a ear tag and tag the pig in its right ear. And then that pig after the withdrawal period will be sold off the farm. Now that our piglet receiving area is all set and ready to go, we just have to wait for our pigs to arrive. As soon as your piglets arrive on your farm, you wanna make sure that you get that trailer up to your receiving barn so you can get those piglets unloaded as soon as possible. So before that trailer even gets to your farm, you wanna make sure that you have everything set up within your receiving barn, so your food and your water and your fence. But then also you wanna make sure that you have the path from the trailer to your barn already prepared. You wanna make sure that the trailer can get as close as possible to your receiving area so the pigs have a shorter distance to go from the trailer to your receiving area. The alley that we use to get our pigs from the trailer to the receiving area is just a temporary setup. So I will go ahead and show you what we use and how we set up our alley here at Heifer USA. First of all, we use a ramp and this ramp we use for all of our species to get on and off the trailers in different locations. It's important that the ramp is tall enough to get to the top of your trailer floor so the pigs can just go ahead and walk from the trailer onto the ramp and off. They don't have to make a big jump or anything. With this ramp, we have some outdoor carpet over it and then we have some wood cleats so that they can get some traction coming off and they don't slip. And then we are also using recycled plywood that we already had here on the farm. I highly encourage that. There's no need to go out and buy anything new for this setup. And so we use a few different pieces of wood to make sure that those sides of your alley are solid and the pigs can't see through them. 
and then it just helps create a barrier so the pigs go directly from your trailer to your barn. We also have a few cinder blocks that help hold the boards in place and our hog panel. You can also use rope or wire, anything just to help keep it secure while the pigs are moving through it. When unloading your pigs from the trailer, it's important to use low stress handling techniques and equipment. To help you with that, we have a few low stress handling tools. We use a aluminum water bottle with some BBs in it, and that just creates a nice loud shaking sound that will help the pigs move forward. We also have a few of these pig blind boards or sorting boards, and these help create a barrier at your legs. Depending on the size batch of pigs you'll be receiving at your farm, you wanna take them off in smaller groups. And the first group or two is gonna be the most difficult to get off the trailer. They're in a new space, they're new to you, and so you just need to be patient and work with the pigs in a low stress way. And so when we receive pigs, we get a full trailer and then there's dividing doors on that trailer. So we can just take them off in quadrants of that 15 to 20 pigs. If your pigs are on a trailer and it's all of them in one section, this would be a really good time to use these sorting boards and to create a barrier just in front of you to help push those pigs forward. That way they can't go through you and go back onto the trailer. That would just be creating more of a stressful environment for them and also for you. Our newest batch of pigs have been in our receiving barn for about a week now, and we are going to go over the best way to get your pigs trained to electric fence. So on the inside of our barn, we use high tensile wire with insulated donuts and insulators on rebar. And we just hooked that up to a solar charger. So that fence is always there and always in place, ready for a new batch of pigs when they arrive. You don't have to fence in every side of your training area with the electric fence. It would be efficient enough just to cover one or two sides with that. The pigs will still interact to it and still get trained to what that fence is. If you're using two strands of electric fence, the top strand you're going to want at their eye level as they're standing up straight. The height that you're going to want that bottom strand is going to be at the pig's eye level as they are having their nose to the ground and rooting. That way both of those strands are visible to the pigs no matter what they're doing. While the pigs are in the receiving barn, we will check on them at least three times a day. While we're checking our pigs, we're looking for a few key things. The first would be to make sure that everyone is able to access the water and the feed. The wood troughs, the pigs can easily access that. They have no issues eating out of those ones straight away. Same thing with the metal trough feeder. Our gravity bulk feeder has the doors. And so what I do for the first few days is to just take a few minutes, encourage the pigs to come up and interact with me. And then I'll hold some of those doors open so that they understand they have to open those doors in order to get access to that feed. With the type of water that we use, it has four sections, but there's a door on each of those sections. As soon as the pigs are here and off the trailer, I'll go and sit by that water, hold the doors open and splash around so that the pigs can hear that water and know that's where they can find it at. For the first few days, as your pigs are in the receiving barn, it's going to be really important that you spend time with them, get them used to the noise of our vehicles as well as our voice. Um, so I will just take a five gallon bucket, I'll sit and talk to them, let them come up and interact with me and really make important observations. And every time we come up here, we also check our electric fence just to make sure that it is hot and not shorted out. That way, if they interact with it, it just reinforces that that is their barrier and they continue to be trained to it. During the observation, you want to keep an eye out for anyone that looks like they may be struggling or limping or just doesn't feel well. That way you can go ahead and put them in the hospital pen for a closer observation. And then lastly, during those observations, we want to make sure that all of the animals are comfortable. So in the wintertime, we want to make sure that everyone is staying warm. If we need to put more hay down as bedding, we'll do that. And of course, in the summertime, we want to make sure that they're staying cool enough. And so we will put up a hose and fill a wallow for them a couple times a day just to ensure that they are able to cool down. 
Want to apply Christine's advice in your Piglet receiving area? As promised, we've got a free resource for you to keep you organized on your pig farming journey. Our free livestock resource guide contains chore lists, record templates, and more to help you succeed in raising pastured pigs. This resource guide also contains useful templates for pastured poultry, grass-fed beef, and pasture-raised sheep to expand your small farm business. Pause this video now to grab your copy at the link in the description. Then come back to learn the most important steps you can take to keep your new piglets healthy. And now back to Christine. To help ensure that our new arrivals stay safe and healthy, we do implement biosecurity measures. A few of those biosecurity measures would be that we wanna visit the younger pigs first. The older established pigs out on pasture have been able to build up a good immune system compared to our new arrivals that may have been stressed during transport and newly arriving here. We want to make sure that the receiving barn is a good distance away from any other pigs or animals that we would have here on the ranch. Before leaving the barn, you wanna make sure that you either wash your boots with a scrub brush and water or have specific barn boots that you wear only up here with the new pigs. If you wanna learn more about our biosecurity protocols at Heifer USA, please check out our full length biosecurity video on our YouTube channel. About five days after the pigs have arrived here, I will set up an outdoor pasture area for them. I will open that gate and they will have continuous access to that space. I use two strands of poly braid temporary wire as well as poly posts to create this outdoor space. The reason why I wanna use that material is because I only want this to be a temporary area. I can change the size of it depending on the size batch of pigs that I'm receiving. And then it also allows us to manage the outdoor area with our ruminant animals. So with our sheep and our cattle. We do require it to have proper rest before the ruminants come and graze on it or before the pigs go out there after the ruminants. A few reasons why I want to give them access to an outdoor space is because within just a few days, they are going to have already consumed and trampled the vegetation that was in their uncovered area. This will also get them comfortable in preparation to leave their barn for when we take them to their woodlot paddock. To help encourage the pigs to go out and explore their outdoor pasture, I will move those wood troughs just outside the gate so the pigs can still see them. They know that there's feed in there and then that will just help encourage them to step over that threshold where the gate was and be in their outdoor space. While the pigs have access to the outdoor space, I will also be checking that with our fence tester to make sure that the voltage is high enough and I'll also walk that entire fence just to make sure the pigs haven't rooted anything up onto those lines. At 10 to 14 days, we will take these pigs and move them out to their first paddock of their full-time pasture. And so it's really important that we make sure that everyone is healthy, able to move out to pasture, and that they're trained to that electric fence. If you wanna see how we move our pigs from the receiving barn out to their first pasture, we have a video on that too. Please check out the Great Pig Move on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below, and we'll see you next time. Keep learning about pastured pigs with Heifer USA. Here are two more videos to help you succeed in raising pigs on pasture.